I really wanted to show you something about insulin and glucagon. Now, most people get a little bit confused about what's actually happening with our hormones. Now, with each of those glands that I was telling you about, they secrete hormones in order to create homeostasis, don't they? That's what all that's happening is that our sensory neural, our sensory receptor picks up and says, something's not right here. We've either got too much of this or not enough of that going on. So we need to do something and create, a, a, either put more hormones in our body or create a change somewhere that allows that balance to be restored. And that is all our endocrine system does, homeostasis, all day long. Now, we're going to talk about the insulin and glucagon in particular because A, it comes up in your exam, and B, as fit pros, regardless of whether you're Pilates, personal trainer, yoga, maybe just level two, whatever it is that you do, this is important because at this point, you understand what's going on in your client's body, especially if you go on to work with diabetics or exercise referral work as well. So really important. So what I want you to imagine, you've uh, got my fantastic drawing on screen. And so what I want you to imagine is that the red strip along the bottom is your artery or your blood vessel. Let's go with blood vessel. And the little blue dot swimming around in there is your glucose. So you've got some glucose swimming around and we know that glucose comes from carbohydrate. So glucose is literally just carbohydrate whilst it's floating around in our blood. That's the name for glucose. Now, when glucose is stored, either in our liver, liver muscle or fat, there are the three places we can store it, any of those cells. When we store it in there, it becomes something called glycogen. Not glucagon, glycogen. Now, in this, this is glycogen when it's stored, glucose when it's floating, okay? So, if we end up in our sensory receptors in here that says, oh, God, this person's gone way too much on their uh, on their sugary food tonight, and they've got cookies in there, they've got maybe some car a huge amount of carbohydrates, and the sugar levels are high, our sensory receptor sends out a signal, CNS responds, and our body goes, we need some more insulin. So it stimulates the pancreas to create more and to send out more hormone insulin. And the reason why we need insulin is because insulin is the hormone that literally takes that glucose and opens up the door to put it in our liver so that it can be stored as glycogen, puts it in our muscle and it puts it in our fat. So insulin is like the key. It unlocks these doors to this storage world, basically. So insulin basically just goes, time to go back in there, time to get stored, and it opens up the door and lets them go in. And the problem that diabetics have is that either their insulin doesn't work properly or they don't make enough of it or none at all, which means that they end up having to have synthetic ways or synthetic insulin injected, which is a different way of them being able to get the same result. So what's happening in this situation then is if we have glucose floating around in our body, insulin moves glucose into any of these cells. Now, the liver's got a select amount of storage, but it's a favoured place to put it. And then the muscles have got a select amount of storage, but again, a really useful place to have glycogen hanging around ready so we can use it for action. But if both of those are full, then we have unlimited amounts of capability in our fat cells. So if we've got extra glucose hanging around, just chuck it in the fat cells. So you're already starting to see how this relates into weight management as well. Really important with these hormones. Now, we can't just have something that allows us to decrease our blood sugar levels. because That's basically what insulin does. Yeah, it decreases our blood sugar levels by moving glucose into the cells. We need something that can mobilize that glucose again if we ever need it. So there's no point having something stored if we can't get it back out. So this is the role of glucagon. And this is the one that makes it gone from the, livers, the liver, muscles and fat. It literally is the opposite to insulin. So that when we get a little sensation um, happen at the sensory receptors in our blood vessels that says, oh, God, I'm a little bit low on blood glucose. Maybe you're at the end of a tiring day. Maybe you've kind of hit that point now. Need a cup of tea. You literally have this sensory receptor kick in and it just says, I'm low on blood glucose. Now you've got two options. You can either eat something and get some more in your blood or glucagon can literally just take it 
and and take it out of the liver, the muscles and the fat, and through a certain level of systems, then pushes that into your blood blood vessels again. So it tops it up and it becomes glucose again in your blood system. So these two work opposite. Insulin moves glucose into the cells. Glucagon moves glycogen from the cells and makes it glucose in the blood. Ta-da! So can you see how the endocrine system really is just a balance of different hormones to make us stay in one particular place? Now, as soon as you know what the others do, so you might be a parathyroid, is about calcium or about um, uh, water levels in the body. So with thyroid and parathyroid and metabolism, I know that now that one must take it up and one must take it down. I know that with the, the pituitary is about growth hormone, one of them must take it up and one of them must take it down. So you've kind of got opposites in the body and it allows us to keep us in a nice even keel the whole time. So as it's uh, now fast upon us, let's quiz that. Let's see how that's stuck in, in the brain for that nice little quick tip. What hormone is released when blood glucose levels falls? Good, some fantastic answers coming in. So I'm going to give you your answer. So if you're ready for it, uh, the answer is D. So the answer is glucagon. So remember, if it's what hormone is released when blood glucose levels fall. So when the blood glucose level is low, at what point, uh, what hormone would need to be stimulated in order to take that back up to homeostasis and in order to keep it balanced what would need to happen so this is a wording question isn't it absolutely wording and i know you guys would have either have gone for a or d but the answer is d because it's going to take the glycogen out of the cells and put it back in the blood as glucose so it takes the blood glucose levels back up 